Okay, good evening everyone to council meeting number nine, Tuesday, March 19th. And uh, at this point, I would like to call the meeting to order, and in so doing, we recognize that we meet on the traditional territory of the Lataco Dene. Uh, we will announce that we have regrets from Councillors Runge and Vic. So now I would like to get, oh, before we go to uh, an approval of the agenda, we do have two, light, two late items. M, under M3 correspondence, March, uh, a letter dated March 19, 2024 from Lataco Dene Nation requesting to reaffirm Lataco Dene and City of Quinell Memorandum of Understanding. And we also have um, a late item under, one moment, under K4 on the uh, admin report 50 slash 24. So with those updates, could I get a motion to adopt the agenda? Okay, uh, Councillor Elliott, Councillor uh, Goulet, all in favor? Carried. You're all alone over there, Councillor Rudenberg. I am. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have any um, Oh, we have to move the, uh, to adopt the minutes of the regular council meeting, March 5. Mover, please. Uh, Councillor Elliott, or Councillor McKelvey, Councillor Elliott, seconding, okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Uh, we have no presentations, we have no delegations, no items arising from previous minutes. Committee reports. Okay, we're going to uh, go to uh, Councillor Rudenberg to report on behalf of Councillor Runge on the February 29 policy and bylaw chair or committee chair summary. Thank you. Um, so you have the report in front of you. Um, there was two main discussions um, that took place at that meeting. One was in regards to council remuneration and expenses. We discussed the council remuner remuneration adjustments for missed meetings and agreed that we need to remove the deduction of $50 from council annual remuneration if councillors miss more than three regularly scheduled uh, council or committee meetings. Um, we know that um, if attendance is misused, we're going to um, look at creating the executive committee to uh, address attendance issues. Um, the policy and bylaw committee also agreed that when um, the code of conduct and ethics IWC4 is brought back to the policy and bylaw committee, that's when we will um, put the process of the as needed formation of the executive committee into that policy. We also um, discussed the fact that the community charter actually has rules that uh, local government need to follow in regards to attendance and so we will make sure that we follow that as um, the community charter states recommendation will follow. On sightly commercial properties, we had an initial discussion. Our Director of Development Services has informed the committee that a report is going to be drafted regarding unsightly commercial properties. Um, they're meeting with BC Assessment to discuss land assessments in regards to these properties, and a report will be brought back to an upcoming policy and bylaw committee for further detailed uh, discussions. So out of this report, there's a recommendation in regards to council remuneration and expenses policy IWC 8. Would you like me to? Your I'll move that the policy and bylaw committee recommends to council the removal of the council remuneration adjustments for missed meetings that are currently stated in the annual review of council remuneration and expenses IWC slash eight policy. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Councillor Rudenberg. Seconded, uh, Councillor Goulet. Is there any discussion? All in favor, opposed, carried. I, I just want to say that I'm, I'm really happy to see that the committee is addressing the matter of unsightly commercial premises. Um, it's high time for that. So, uh, way to go. Okay, the next, um, the next item on the agenda is, um, okay, we've dealt with that. Oh, I got the board highlights from the Caribou Regional District Board Meeting. Uh, March 1, 2024. Uh, the board approved the regional district's 24, 2024 to 2028 financial plan after considering final changes and public commentary was received. The total budget stands at 69,811,626 with a total ra tax requisition set at 32 million, which is an increase of two 
of $2,898 over the 2023 requisition. The CRD property tax rate will, oh no, pardon me, this is the Caribou Chilcotin Regional Hospital District. That property tax rate will remain fixed at $75 per 100,000 assessed residential value. This level of taxation and use of funding from capital reserves will be able to fund the CCRHD's current financial commitments, including the expansion to the Caribou Memorial Hospital. And on North Central local government resolutions, the regional district is really doing a yeoman's job on uh, putting resolutions forward. Um, one is ensuring that federal and provincial funding is provided when drinking water, drinking water quality standards are revised and require community water systems to ensure water quality advisor, advisories. And I'll, I'll add, a, um, a, I guess, an editorial comment to that because really uh, a prime mover for why we have to go to um, um, water for pe water chlorination is that the federal government uh, has imposed changes to the uh, to the manganese numbers so if they're going to do that they should they should pay for it um, also, the regional district is going to the um, NCLGA with resolutions concerning implementing a fireworks sale ban when an area is Im impacted by open burning restrictions, collaborate with regional districts to de develop better emergency management rules, changing the name of the Union of BC Municipalities to reflect and include regional districts, improvement districts, First Nations, and Indigenous governing bodies uh, and that one has been up before so it's going to it's going to be interesting to see how that one goes but certainly I believe personally that um, a change of name for the Union of BC municipalities is long past due uh, they, they're going for ending the Agricultural Land Commission's notice of intent requirements for secondary residential structures another good move uh, proposing amendments with the City of Williams Lake to provide, uh, or for, or pardon me, for provincial funeral service laws to permit the alkaline hydrolysis process, and this is this is an alternative uh, to to cremation and to burial. And finally, acting on the Office of the Senior Advocate's recommendations to improve ser service delivery to seniors in rural communities. And finally, uh, the regional district has or will be applying for a grant of up to $150,000 in funding from the UBCM to support the consolidation of its zoning and land use bylaws. At the present time, they have three zoning and three land use uh, bylaws, so that necessitates three maps and pretty well three of everything. So a common map and a common bylaw uh, is, is in the offing. So uh, I don't need a motion to adopt my report. Uh, the next one that I have on the agenda is a, a MIN report 49 slash 2024 hotel revitali revitalization tax exemption. And I'm going to go to the manager of economic development and tourism to deliver this report. The purpose of this report is to confirm Council's intention and direction to develop a hotel revitalization tax exemption bylaw. Council's strategic plan and the City's economic development transition strategy outline a desire to develop Quinell as a tourism destination. A key tactic is to encourage more event hosting in the community. A limiting factor for this goal is Quinell's capacity to provide quality hotel accommodations to visitors. The last new hotel development in Quinell was in 1999. The proposed hotel revitalization tax exemption bylaw would incentivize new hotel development and upgrades to existing hotel and motel accommodation by providing a 100% tax exemption on the assessed value of improvements on the municipal portion of property taxes for a period of 10 years. To be eligible, the project must be 18 units or more, available to the general public for short-term daily occupancy, have a new construction value or demolition and reconstruction value of $500,000 or greater based on the building permit for the project, meet the requirements set out in the City of Cornell Zoning Bylaw, and must be consistent with the future land use designation for the parcel as set out in the OCP, 
and the form and character of the project must be consistent with the applicable development permit area design guidelines contained within the official community plan. Applications will be considered for a period of five years following adoption of the bylaw or when $250 million of assessed value improvements under the revitalization program have been reached. Council may also wish to consider additional eligibility requirements for the exemption, such as specific landscaping or xeriscaping requirements, requiring developments to achieve higher levels of the step code, requiring accessibility requirements beyond the building code requirement, or other requirements that align with Council's strategic plan. And the recommendation is that Cornell City Council direct staff to develop the application and tax exemption certificate that will form Schedule A and B of proposed City of Cornell Hotel Revitalization Tax Exemption Bylaw Number 1959-2024 and bring the bylaw forward for first and second reading at a future council meeting. Okay, thank you, Amy. Do we uh, have a, okay, I've got uh, Councilor Elliott, I presume, moving? Yes. yes. And... Councillor Rudenberg seconding. Uh, before we go to the, and that's the recommendation, obviously, I, I do have a question, and that had, or that is, has there or will there be any uh, notification slash consultation with existing hotels and commercial accommodation? There will be notice provided prior to adopting the bylaw. So not necessarily reaching out directly, but there will be notice um, in the paper um, prior to. So therefore, we will not be uh, individually notifying each uh, commercial um, accommodation enterprise? No? No. Not okay. That. And, and that's not required? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Our city manager. Mr. Mayor, um, on the point about notification for existing client or existing hoteliers, it should be noted, of course, in this bylaw and council, I'm sure is aware of it, that existing hoteliers, if they do uh, upgrades on their hotels, it'll apply to them as well. Um, so it's not just get aimed only at new hoteliers, but if that's a step that council would like, that, that we would do a, a separate notification step for the hotel, current hotel operators, we could certainly do that at council's direction. Well, I would certainly uh, encourage us to do that, just in the interest of um, transparency and, and, you know, getting the word out there. So if, if there's a, do we need a motion to do that, to notify? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A, a motion would be great, just to help staff action that, if that is truly council's wish. Okay, I would welcome a motion then to, okay, Councillor McKelvey, seconder, yeah, uh, Councillor Elliott, or Councillor um, Goulet, take your pick. Any any uh, discussion or co uh, conversation on that? Uh, yes, Rhea. There's a motion on the floor. Yeah, the, the motion on the floor is to, is to notify hotels, motels. I guess I would capsulize that into commercial accommodation. I, I don't know. No. Okay. You, you, you Sorry. Um, yeah. So the um, what's on the floor right now is the original motion to uh, um, have uh, staff develop the application. Um, so you can do that one and then also do yeah. that as a second motion. Don't get them mixed up in there. You have to finish one. I'm terribly sorry about that. You are absolutely right. So uh, the motion on the floor is to uh, is the recommendation that Quinnell um, direct staff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So can we um, can we add the notification? I'm just asking for some sort of procedural advice here. Can we add the uh, the bit about um, notification into that motion with the approval of the mover and second? Yes. Okay, and that is, is that the uh, approved by the mover and seconder? Yes. Okay, we're good to go then. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, thank you, Council. Okay, the next one is from the um, uh, Director of Development Service, Multi-Unit Housing Incentives Bylaw Amendment.
thank you, Mayor, through to Council. The purpose of this bylaw is to approve amendments to the proposed City of Quinnell Multi-Use Housing Incentive Amendment Bylaw, number 1953, which is currently at second reading, uh, and um, uh, and to provide third, the first th three readings after the first uh, uh, or the second is is is, uh, is is amended. The council reviewed uh, the director of development services report on current multi-unit housing incentive bylaw December 5th and directed staff to proceed with the bylaw amendments to extend the term of the bylaw, uh, add uh, additional parcels in the West Quinell el eligible area and revise the definition of low environmental impact. Notice of the proposed bylaw was posted in the February 21st, 28th editions of the Caribou Observer. Following, uh, uh, there was some housekeeping amendments noted in the bylaw, so that's why we're looking to rescind second reading and reread, just to, to, to amend these uh, um, housekeeping amendments that are that are listed here. Um, there's some language that needs to be corrected um, uh, to identify the current financial bylaw. Uh, wording and numbering was amended to, uh, for in, in section 1.5, um, and, um, and to correct um, some language about uh, providing the tax certificate to the assessor, correct an error in the wording of section 1.6. Um, those amendments were uh, are, uh, put into the, the bylaw now so it can be uh, read um, with those amendments in it. Uh, the recommendation is that the council rescinds second reading of the City of Quinell Multi-Unit Housing Incentive Amendment Bylaw number 1953 and provide second and third readings as amended. Okay, thank you. Just some clarification from staff. I presume that we need motions to rescind and then new motions to introduce uh, or reintroduce uh, the readings? Or can it, can it all be done under one resolution? Okay, well, as, as per the recommendation there, I would entertain a mover and a seconder uh, for that recommendation. Uh, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Rudenberg, I, I do have one, does anyone have any questions? I have a question. And that is that I, I noticed that the responsibility, uh, uh, basically through this bylaw, council is del delegating to the uh, director of development services, the authority, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is that pursuant to the, uh, the local government act slash community charter, or does council ever, um, have a say as to whether an application should be, uh, pardon me, approved or not. Thank you, Council. It definitely could be that way. Um, the, the decision was made and there is legislation that allows uh, uh, councils to delegate. Uh, I would think that the principle behind this is there's, there's very strict requirements as to when someone uh, uh, would would be um, apply or not there's not there's not a decision making uh, you know there there's check boxes more than more than do we like the project or not and i think that that's the, that's the key here we want to keep this uh, these these um, incentive bylaws very clean cut and so that we're not picking and choosing um, um, pro projects that would uh, would meet the guidelines yeah i, I understand that uh, completely and I suppose that the, um, the default to that is that um, an applicant has the right to appeal to council if uh, they're not happy with um, staff's decision. It's absolutely written into yeah. the bylaws. Yeah, I saw that. So, okay, so is there anything more on this before I call the question? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Next item is... Um, for the Economic Development Coordinator, UBCM Community Emergency Preparedness Fund, the Disaster Risk Reduction Climate Adaptation, Dragon Lake Dam. Thank you, Mayor. The purpose of this report is to gain Council's approval to apply for the UBCM grant under the Disaster Risk Reduction Climate Adap Adaptation Funding Stream. Disaster Risk Reduction for Dragon Lake Dam is eligible for funding through the UBCM Disaster Risk Reduction Climate Adaptation Fund. A dam safety review was recently completed for Dragon Lake Dam as required by the BC Dam Safety Regulations. The review increased the classification of this dam from high consequence dam to a very high consequence dam and identified a number of deficiencies with the structure and control gates. This grant would allow for engineering planning for the necessary maintenance and upgrades. 
the recommendation is that Cornell City Council support the application to the UBCM uh, for, for up to $150,000 under the Disaster Risk Reduction Climate Adaptation Fund for planning, maintenance, and upgrades to the Dragon Lake Dam. Perfect, thank you. Um, and uh, do we have a mover? Uh, Councillor Goulet, seconded Councillor Rudenberg. Uh, any discussion on the recommendation or actually the motion? Uh, seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. I see nothing from the um, being called forward from the... Report. From council information? Yeah. Report K4. Oh, I'm sorry. How did I miss that? Yes, it's an admin report 5024 proposed zoning amendments on small scale housing director Turner to report. That is a late agenda attachment. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the purpose of this report is just to provide Council with an update and a schedule for the required amendments to the zoning bylaw to allow small-scale multi-unit housing. As you're aware, we have a very tight timeline for these zoning amendments uh, to uh, to do the review, um, um, develop policy options, and uh, get through the whole amendment process. Um, so that's why we're I'm we've we've we we're looking at the process and making sure that we're going to be able to make, meet the timelines and the Council dates of which we need to bring those bylaw amendments it's back for. Um, uh, luckily, there's no public hearing with this uh, with this um, zoning amendment, so um, uh, that does uh, cut out one stage for sure. Uh, we are required to have uh, the Ministry of Transportation review and approve the bylaw, though, so we um, need to work that in. Uh, the best the best practice has been uh, advised to you know do a back working backwards process, figure out when we have to have this uh, amended by, and that would be Ju June 25th would be the last council meeting uh, prior to the June 30th meeting um, and then uh, working our way back. Um, we have engaged a, a consortium of consultants that are um, that are uh, have a, that are working in a workshop format almost like a boot camp in order to get uh, communities through this process. Um, they um, have partnered with legal and engineering and uh, planning of resources so we're gonna have a a very, very fast work through here uh, over the next little while with planning staff and with these consultants to get these amendments forward and to you. Um, but I just wanted to give you a bit of an amendment, so you are a, a little bit of a, a note, just so that you'd see how long, you know, how this process was going to come through. As well, I thought it was uh, prudent to say, uh, you know, give you a little bit of a list of the other uh, requirements that are coming here with these um, amendments that are coming through the bills for the Housing Statutes Amendment Acts. Um, just, just for council's information. We, it's been confirmed that um, with respect to Bill 47, transit-oriented, there was going to be no repercussions for, for the city of Quinnell. So there, there's nothing that we really have to be concerned with with respect to that bill and the amendments. Um, uh, the development financing amendments, there's a lot of conversation about there. They, they've just released some of their, uh, in fact today, some of their guidance documents for that. Um, but again... These are not required amendments, and we will um, we'll review uh, for them for consideration as, as we go through those those projects. But we're not; they won't be up and coming with the the first uh, round of uh, a round of amendments that I think I see the, us going through over the next two years. Um, the uh, the real deadlines here again is that June 30th, June 30th for the zoning amendments. Um, then after that, we're going to be in, 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 in short order here, in looking to engage consultants to as assist with the housing needs report, the, the interim report that's again due at the end of December of this year, um, as well as getting started with the full OCP and zoning amendments that will require be required the year after, uh, in, in order to engage consultants and have a, a, a timeline of which we. I think I think we are going to need to get through this. Uh, we are going to engage them fairly shortly. The uh, get the process rolling. It's going to take some time. Um, the um we luckily did get the $195,000 uh, grant. We will be putting those funds um, to, uh, to to utilize to do these uh, to, to uh, get these consultants in for these cases. Is there any questions? 
Uh, your question, uh, the recommendation, is it just to receive or is it, do we need a motion on the recommendation? There's nothing else other than receiving just, just yet. Yeah. Information. Okay, thank you. Do I have any uh, questions from Council? Councillor Rudenberg. Not so much a question, but um, recognizing that the entire province has the same deadline as we do, it's it's I'm it's a really it's really important to get out there to try and get those consultants sooner rather than later because they're going to be in high demand over the next year and a half. So kudos for getting that first batch working, but I know that um, I don't think we're going to have enough consultants in the province to cover off everyone. <laughs> We, we've also engaged our the housing needs, uh, the consultant that did our past housing needs report just to do the interim one, so and put them on notice that they're going to be there for us first. Um, what we're waiting for right now, the only reason we're, we're not able to engage them is because the province has not released yet the regulations um, for that, and so um, hopefully they do it soon, given that it's the end of the year. Okay, thank you. Uh, no further discussion on that item. Okay, now I will move to the council information package and there was no call to bring anything forward, but I think it's worthy of mention that there's a, an encouraging uh, announcement from the Ministry of Mental Health and Addictions on the creation or the hopeful creation of a foundry center here in Quinell. So I think that that is good news. And that is in the agenda package for anyone that, that wishes to pull that uh, information up. Okay, we will go now to correspondence. We have a letter from the Gwinnell Downtown Association. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could uh, just capsulate, capsulate that for the benefit of council and the, and the public. Letter dated March 13th from Quinell Downtown Association. They are applying for funding for an additional staff member to help with events and administration. We're applying through the Work BC and their Community Employer Partnerships Program to host additional events and promotions as well as have help with our current planning needs. This program would help with funding for a year to hire someone that qualifies for their program. We are requesting a letter of partner support from the City of Quinell for our funding application. Okay, so do we, uh, moving moving by uh, Councillor Elliott, seconded Councillor uh, McKelvey to provide a letter of support as is being requested. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. And the, the next one is a letter from the um, Association of Farmer, B, the BC Association of Farmers Markets. Letter dated February 22nd, in Quinell during the 2023 season, North Caribou Aboriginal Family Program Society Community Kitchen provided lower income pregnant persons, families and seniors with coupons. These local residents redeemed 26,193 with the local farmers market at the Quinell Farmers Market. Over 75 lower income residents benefited. We encourage you to send a letter of gratitude and support to BC Ministry of Health, Minister Dix. Your support and feedback bolsters our goal of securing ongoing and expanding funding for the BC Farmers Market Nutrition Coupon Program. Uh, thank you. Uh, anybody, anyone want? Okay, Councillor Goulet is moving it, seconded by Councillor Elliott. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Council. Finally, on, under correspondence, we have a late um, agenda item, and that is a letter from the Lataco Dene Nation. So um, it's a fairly lengthy letter, but I think that it deserves to be read into the record. So Madam Clerk, if you could do that, please. Letter dated March 19th, 2024. It has come to our attention that a person related to a member of the city's elected has been distributing a book entitled Grave Error, How the Media Misled Us and the Truth About Re Residential Schools. This book makes many harsh comments, including truth has been turned into a c casualty, implying that cultural genocide did not occur and basically questioning the existence of Indian residential schools. The nation should not have to defend the findings of truth and the Truth and Recre Reconciliation Commission. I apologize. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce the next two names. <laughs> to Kemlips and Schwetmink First Nation and the Williams Lake First Nation, amongst others, that have been so severely castigated by the authors of the book. The calling into question of what our nation went through is a slap in our people's collective faces and is very hurtful to them. The nation has a significant number of members who suffered through attendance at the residential school and today suffer through the long-term trauma of what they went through. The book adds to that hurt. 
a major point made by the book is that cultural genocide did not occur at residential schools. Cultural genocide is defined by the American Genocide Museum as acts and measures I apologize, Armenian Genocide Museum, as acts and measures undertaken to destroy nations or other ethnic groups, culture through spiritual, national, and cultural destruction. In 2015, Chief Justice Beverly McLaughlin of the Supreme Court of Canada stated that Canada's historical treatment of Indigenous persons was an attempt at cultural genocide and the worst stain on the Canadian historic record. Cultural genocide did occur through placing Indigenous children in Indian, Indian residential schools. We ask that the Mayor and Council reaffirm the terms of the Memorandum of Understanding between the City and us. We would also appreciate the opportunity to have some of our elders who experienced residential school attendance meet with the mayor and council to provide first-hand knowledge of the treatment they were subjected to and survived. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Goulet, are you wishing to speak? Uh, I am. Yes. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, and uh, yeah, um, I agree 100% that we should reaffirm the terms of the Memorandum of Understanding. I think that's very important for us to, to keep that memorandum fresh in our minds, and we should be reviewing that uh, every uh, month, I believe, just to make sure that we are following that Memorandum of Understanding. I also agree 100% with the elders um, who experienced the residential school to uh, have a meeting with them and listen and learn and be educated and have an open mind when we do have that meeting. Uh, I have a, a bit of a history to share with you. You know, it's a, uh, I wasn't sure. I was, I was really thinking about how this would, would come out, but I, I did receive the book through, uh, through a, a, a third party, through, an in, through my mom, actually, who went to a business in town, and the book was given to her um, with my dad <laughs> sitting right next to them. And as you all know, my dad did go to residential school and was an attendee in, in residential school. So uh, it came uh, uh, from my mom. She took it, she read it, she called me, and she said, I can't read it anymore. She read the first maybe 100 pages or so and just put it down. Um, she gave it to me to, ha to, uh, to uh, have a look at and read. I did read it from um, beginning. Uh, I, too, had to put it down. I was frustrated. I was walking around my house. My wife was thinking, what's wrong with you? I was just like, there was an angst and there was a, a bit of me that said, what is going on? here. I continued to read the book. I read it from cover to cover. Um, it is very uh, one-sided. It is an opinion of somebody who wrote the book, so we have to take that into consideration. It's a person's opinion and how they feel about what's happening with residential school. Uh, my issue is how the, the book is being circulated and distributed to the community. There's community people out there who do have the book. They are receiving the book. Um, some of them even have notes inside saying, read this and look at what you're, what you're doing and, and you're smart enough to understand what what is being said in the book you know it's a it, it was very disturbing um, you know I like I said I was just like appalled that this would be circulating within within the community um, you know residential school um, people have their opinions everyone's allowed to have their opinion and I'm not against people having their opinion but we shouldn't be you know here's something that is detesting um, things that have been taking place for years with reconciliation and what we're trying to do with indigenous um, elders and indigenous people you know we're, we're we're doing an actual injustice by by saying here's a book right here's something that you should read and and look at and and, and form your own own opinion it, it just it just came to me as a shock you know I, w I was debating should I say but people know who, where the book is coming from some of them like I said have initials in them uh, one was sent to the a school district to uh, to the office. We're not sure if they want it to be on the curriculum, which will never happen because it's just not something that we would, you know, entertain uh, putting within our within our school system. So it's very, very, very uh, traumatizing. It's very, very um, disrespectful, I think, to uh, an Indigenous community and especially somebody to receive this book, you know. And and with my dad going to residential school, she brought up a lot of stuff. Let me tell you, you know, it was contesting that they didn't exist, they, did, they weren't there. Those things are real. They are actually real and they did happen to Indigenous people who went through the, went through the school, right? And especially when you were just picked up, taken to the school and, you know, everything was taken away from you. So, very emotional. 
I mean, it, it was hard for me to, to take, but I am 100% behind Lataco, Diné, and having that meeting and being able to, uh, to learn and educate ourselves. I think that's the biggest piece for me, is that we need to educate ourselves. We really, really, really need to step back and think outside that box, so thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Goulet, and I, I can tell with the emotion that that really strikes to the heart. So, a anyone else? Oh, Councillor Elliott. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, yeah, this is this is disturbing that this is happening in our community. Um, I personally want to apologize to your family, Tony. Um, I think it's just absolutely unacceptable. The only time that I've really gotten, that I can recall emotional in this uh, chambers is when we had an elder come in here and explain uh, what had happened to her and, and to her family and it was completely devastating. And I cannot imagine uh, someone coming into my home and taking my children. I just, so. Um, we've made some great steps in our community, I think, in, in recent years and it feels like we're, some are trying to push us backwards. And one of the things I think that is important is, is not, the whole thing is just so important and just so disturbing, but it mentions that a person related to a member of the city's elected is doing this. So for me, that calls to question exactly who's doing it. So I think the, I think the name has to be mentioned and I'm asking if anyone w is willing to do that at this point in time. I will be making a statement uh, once the uh, members of council have had an opportunity to speak. I agree that we should be um, digging back into the MOU. There's been a lot of good work done. We should not be going backwards. Um, I will probably have more comments after the mayor speaks. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor McKelvey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to um, support Tony's suggestion to read the memorandum of understanding every month. And I would also like to see that memorandum of understanding put on our website, our city website, because it's not there. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Rudenberg? I would like to hear from you first, please. Okay. All right. Um, so some will look upon, oh, before I go any further, I mean, I, I'm, it was, it is my wife that has the book. And um, to be honest, I haven't even opened it. I've looked at the cover, but I've got no interest in looking at it. So moving along, I have a statement. Some will look upon this situation as a threat to our reconciliation efforts. I look upon it as a welcome opportunity for all of us Lahatahutin together to understand and respect one another's views and aspirations even more deeply. As is being asked by the Council of the Lataco Dene Nation, I will be the first as leader of our council and our city and our greater community to positively and meaningfully reaffirm our memorandum of understanding that is so proudly displayed over there on that wall in these chambers. And I humbly accept the Taco Dene Nation Council's kind invitation to us to meet openly with band elders as they help promote and foster our mutual understanding and compassion by sharing their painful firsthand knowledge of their treatment and survival of Indian residential schools. For the record, I wish to share several of our, and I'm, when I'm speaking about our, I'm talking this council, our past ongoing accomplish and ongoing accomplishments. Under my leadership, I am the first and only City of Quesnel mayor ever to voluntarily step forward and appoint our very first Indigenous relation, Relations Liaison. Thank you, Councillor Rudenberg. As a council, councillor rather, 
I participated with Mayor Simpson and the Council of the Day in planning and voting unanimously in favor of, renaming, of our renaming of Seal Tingley Park to Lataco Dene Park. And what a fittingly sacred place for our permanent tribute to our First Nations neighbor. At their eight ancient village at the confluence of two great rivers, two of the three rivers of the Lataco namesake, the Fraser, the Quesnel, and the Blackwater rivers. I have willingly and positively participated in the planning of our proposed residential schools monument outside this city hall and the planned memorial to honor the four war chiefs on sacred ground just north of the hospital. And as a, as a the then uh, councillor, I joined Mayor Simpson and my council colleagues as we unanimously signed our names along with the Council of the Lataco Dene Nation on that formal memorandum of, of agreement and understanding that is so pr proudly displayed in these chambers. We solemnly and regularly affirm our acknowledgement and recognition of the fact that we meet on the traditional territory of the Lataco Dene ter ter Territory at all of our Council and North Caribou Joint Advisory Committee meetings. We have placed Dahuja, welcome to traditional Lataco Dene Territory signage at all of our public buildings, parks, and facilities. And there's our sign right there on the wall. Last month, our communities came together, Lahat Ahudan, for the Lataco Quenel 2024 BC Winter Games. The first BC Games ever to be co named and co sponsored, or co hosted rather, by First Nations and local governments. And we had to lobby hard for that happy and historic outcome. And although not associated with the city, I am, a, I am proud to be a founding and continuing board member of the New Pathways to Gold Society formed 18 years ago in support of indigenous focused economic development through heritage tourism, First Nations reconciliation, community projects, heritage projects and programs all along the historic Hope to Barkerville Gold Rush Trail corridor. And I would add that um, in our um, letters patent for the society um, we are required to have our board mem members made up of half Indigenous and half non-Indigenous. As mayor and leader of this community, I welcome future opportunity for all of us, Lahat and Houghton, together to join together in our collective understanding and respect of one another uh, as we walk along the pathway to reconciliation. And for the non-believers out there, what more can I say? This is from my heart to yours. Thank you. Councillor Rudenberg. Thank you. Um, so, Tony, all that strength that you showed tonight, thank you. Because I know I don't have that in me, and um, I will try to get through this. Um, so yes, I am the First Nations liaison for this uh, council. And uh, with that comes a lot of, of um, responsibility that you don't see at the council table. It's about building those relationships that are so important when you want to work with your First Nations community. So, um, <clears throat> I respect the fact that people have the right to their own opinions, but what I don't see here is the respect that your wife has shown you in your role as mayor of this community. We know that what has happened reflects not only on you, but on council and on our community as a whole. The anger and reopening of old memories is doing serious harm to our First Nations communities, not just Lataco, but the other surrounding communities that we are trying to work with. This is the second time in less than two years that Council has had to reaffirm our commitment to our MOU with Lataco because of comments or actions that have been taken by the mayor's wife, Pat Morton. Um, in regards to First Nations and residential schools. 
To distribute a book that claims cultural genocide did not occur is morally reprehensible and clearly comes from a place that is meant to do harm to members of our First Nations communities. I know that uh, over the past week uh, that the nations have had opportunities to sit together on projects that they're working with uh, with the province and the book issue has come up and there is a consensus amongst the nations that this is not okay. That their elders and communities are suffering because of this being out in the community. There is no excuse for this type of behavior in our community, period. And I don't care whether you think it's about your own opinion and having the right to, to voice it. It's about how this shows showcases our community to the rest of BC and to the world. So Mr. Mayor, I'm really disappointed. I know that you said you respect the fact that she has her own opinion, but again, I reiterate the fact that she's not respecting the fact that you are the mayor of this community and what she does in the community reflects on not only you, but on our council and on our community. No matter how much of that good work that you've talked about, we have done. It only takes one situation like this to blow that completely out of the water. So I'll leave it at that. I do have a couple motions coming up, but I know that the people probably have a few more words they'd like to speak to. Okay, thank, thank you for that. And again, I can, I can understand and appreciate and share the share the emotion. Uh, so I have a, a motion that I would like to propose um, and I'm not sure how to sort of move ahead with this. I, I'll, um, I'll say my bit and then you, you say, Councillor Rudenberg, that you've got a couple of proposed motions as well. I do. Okay. Um, actually, no, I, I'm going to I'm going to change my thinking here. I'm going to, I'm going to let you make your motions. Thank you. Um, so before I do that, is there any other comments that people want to make? Sorry, I I'm sorry. As uh, chair of the meeting, um, <laughs> Councillor Elliott. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I just I have one question. I mean. The I need to know, and the community I feel needs to know, and have been asking me, do you agree with what your wife has been doing in the community? No. Okay, so um, the first mer yeah, motion is in regards to the terms of the MOU. Um, a couple points that I wanted to bring out before I put the motion on the, on the uh, floor. Um, if you have a, the opportunity to uh, look at it, I'd like to point out the second whereas statement where it says, Lataco and the city have engaged in meaningful dialogue with a view towards seeking partnership opportunities based on mutual respect, recognition and reconciliation. And the second point I wanted to uh, highlight was in the principles where it says acknowledge that good relations between neighbours are required for citizens to benefit. So having said that, I'd like to make a motion that Council reaffirms the terms of the MOU as presented to Council on June 20th of 2017. Seconder, Councillor uh, Elliott? No. Or, I'm sorry, Goulet. Is there any further discussion? Well, I guess there's no discussion on that. It's a, so I will now call the question. All in favor? Unanimous. Go ahead, Councillor Rudenberg. Thank you. The second motion, um, um, yeah, I'll use the word I. You can insert Councillor Rudenberg. We'll work with our staff and Lataco Chief Council and their staff to find a date that is suitable for a council to council gathering that includes elders that have experienced residential school attendance to provide their first hand knowledge of this treatment that they were subjected to and survived. Thank you. Seconder, Councillor McKelvey. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. 
Go ahead, Councilor Rudenberg. Um, so I know that people do recognize that we have two councillors missing. Um, unfortunately, they were not able to be here, but they felt that this issue was of paramount importance and they wanted to convey their thoughts. And so they just wanted to let people know that um, they do reaffirm, they, they totally agree with the request to reaffirm our memorandum of understanding between the city and Latako Dene, and that um, regarding the offer to have elders meet with council to share their firsthand experiences, they feel that would also be beneficial. Okay, so thank you. Uh, no, no resolution required there. No. Okay, so uh, is that does that conclude your motion making and Which remarks? I have, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I'll I'll uh, come back to um, to one further comment um, a little bit later on. And uh, right now we will move to to bylaws. Oh, pardon me. We we need. Um, Sorry, we've done the farmers markets. Now we're going to go to to. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've been trying to get attention on that. Just before we move off that last issue, I, I would just like to suggest one other um, resolution for council's consideration: uh, that the city of Cornell stands with the Lataco Dene Nation and all other Indigenous nations all other local indigenous nations in denouncing the book Grave Air, how the media misled us. And it's a two-parter. And the second part is that the city of Cornell agrees with the findings of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Okay, uh, moved by Councillor Goulet. Thank you. Seconded, Councillor Rudenberg. Thank you, Mr. S Mr. City Manager. All in favor? Carried unanimously, thank you. Okay, so now we are going to um, bylaws, uh, N1, bylaw number 1953, City of Quinnell Housing Incentive Tax Exemption, bylaw number 1953-2024. We need a motion. Did we do this already? I thought it was a bit of a deja vu. And um, bylaw number, uh, okay, Councillor Rudenberg is recruiting herself. Bylaw number 1955, City of Quinell Business, West Quinell Business Association, or Business Improvement Area Bylaw, final adoption. Uh, move, moved by Councillor uh, Elliott, seconded by Councillor uh, Goulet. Any d discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, you come back in. Thank you. So that concludes um, bylaws. Uh, information and question period, uh, up ch uh, changes to upcoming council uh, meeting schedule, there are none. Uh, changes to committee appointments. Um, I'd just like to make a, a, a bit of a continuing statement here and a request. Um, in my honest and heartfelt effort to further build and strengthen meaningful truth and recon reconciliation, not only with Lataco Dene Nation, but with all our neighboring First Nations community. I hereby seek a resolution. I believe, I, and maybe I'll need some help, staff, help from staff on this. I do believe that I need a resolution for this. I hereby see, seek a resolution that will co-appoint myself with Councillor Rudenberg to the portfolio of Indigenous relations for the City of Quinell. So if I could get a mover on that, I, I would happily uh, join you, Councillor Rudenberg. Uh, I would like to be a direct part of the discussion and be at the table. And um, so I, I do hope that, that Council will give me uh, that leeway. Do I have a mover? I don't have a mover. So if I don't have a mover, then, oh, pardon me, do I need a resolution for this? I can't simply appoint myself. I believe you can to a liaison position, Mr. Mayor. I believe those are mayor's appointments. So it's a mayor's appointment. Okay, I, I know that it's a mayor's appointment then, but doesn't council have to ratify the mayor's yes. appointment? Yes. Okay, so we'll, we'll go the long way around. I hereby appoint myself as co-chair with the Indigenous Relations with Councillor Rudenberg. Now, could I get a motion to ratify that self-appointment? 
Okay, I don't see anyone coming to the coming to the fore. So, um, with that, um, do we have any um, announcements um, of future events? Okay, one future event that's coming up two days from now, I think, and that is on Thursday. It will be the city of Quesnel's 96th anniversary, March 21. And that puts us one year closer to our 100th anniversary. So it's something to be thinking about as to what we would like to do uh, in recognition of our 100th anniversary. Uh, any gallery questions? Uh, seeing none. Then I would move, uh, uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. Uh, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Rudenberg, all in favor. Thank you, Council.